Hello, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So in this uh, series of videos, uh, I'd like to in introduce the use of Simulink for modeling refrigerator refrigeration systems. And you'll see that we will employ quite heavily um, the, the tool Simscape for fluid flows and especially the two-phase flow blocks, which kind of model the whole, I'd say, I'll call it the, the vapor liquid equilibrium of, of refrigerants. Okay, and so um, it's really pretty amazing kind of what Simulink brings to this whole thing. And so we'll just kind of see it as we go through this. But let's take a look at this initial model. And so I'll hit run. You'll see this little uh, thermodynamic chart. It's essentially uh, enthalpy versus pressure for a refrigerant called R1234YF. And we're about to get going on this. And so, you know, to me, I, I love this as soon as I saw it, you know, that this is the very familiar thing to me on, you know, how thermodynamic cycles work, you know. And, you know, we just ran through, I think it's like 3,600 seconds. And we'll see essentially the establishment of this thermodynamic cycles. We go from, I'll say this point, which is an, a, a pressure and enthalpy, a lower pressure, to a higher enthalpy to then up to the higher pressure and then we ultimately reduce our enthalpy but you know we don't really describe refrigeration systems that way that way typically we kind of see it in the names of the components and that there's essentially an evaporator which adds enthalpy to bring us from the first point to the second point then we have a compressor that raises our pressure and then we have a condenser that takes us from the right half side of the thermodynamic dome where everything's a vapor to the left hand side where everything's a liquid. And of course, it's got this great name called the condenser. All right. And then we got this last piece. And this is probably the piece that always fascinated me. You know, when people, when I was a kid, people started explaining to me how refrigerators work. And they always talked about Freon. It's always Freon. I don't think anybody uses Freon for this anymore. But it's the idea that you could have something that converts from liquid to vapor at reasonably low temperatures. And in and, and absorbing all that energy, you know, kind of leaves, I'll call it the place it left, much colder. It's, it's brought that energy with it through that, that heat of vaporization. Okay, so um, so anyways, we have the, I'll call it the expansion valve right there, which essentially measures and, well, not measure, but, but essentially adjusts the, the expansion so that you expand it the right amount. And generally, the, the right amount is what takes the refrigerant back to where you start it. And that's that point, and then it goes essentially through that same cycle again, but we're seeing that cycle thermodynamically right here. Okay. And as we get through this demo, we're going to see stuff like this. We'll explain what we mean by cold plates, and it's what we would call a thermal mass, but it's essentially the idea of solids. And so there's this idea of, you know, heat um, transfer from, you know, the refrigerant to a solid. And then once you get to a solid, then there's probably heat transfer to gases and things like that. And um, with regard to the condenser, you'll see a fair bit of it up here. You know, and we're using a domain, a fluid domain. That's a word we use all the time at MathWorks. We love saying that word domain, and we love even more saying the words multi-domain, but a fluid domain, which we call moist air. And moist air is pretty important because moist air has humidity, and humidity absolutely contributes in this uh, this heat transfer process. So, so anyways, uh, you know, I'm just kicking this off, but I, I think that this series will probably be Oh, let's guess. Yeah, you guys can correct me after we're done. Uh, but I'd say five or six videos, and hopefully they add up to something a little bit less than an hour. Okay, thank you.